Here's a nice example of a triflate disorder and I show you how um, the current version of Olex2 could handle this problem. So let's first have a look at what we've got. So this is the structure. You're looking at an R factor just, just under 3%. We've got a very strange 90.00 angle with an ESD of 3, but the thing is monoclinic. So strange, I don't understand that. So that really should be 90 and no ESD on that, but that's uh, neither here nor there. The goodness of fit didn't really work out very well. What's in the files? Okay, we've got a lot of values. Let's just get rid of them. We have, uh, this is all fun, LS60. Well, actually, if it doesn't settle after about six cycles, then there's something wrong. So LS6 is probably what we want. We've got omit, a couple of, oh, there's a lot of them. Oh, oh, a lot. Okay, let's get rid of all of them for the moment. Um, and now we should have a fairly clean starting point to this structure. Okay, right, let's refine it using shell XL and I hit refine and we should see what we get. And we get an R factor of just 3%. Uh, something is moving and clearly what is visible here, if I just move this over here, um, that the sulfur here is bigger than it ought to be, this carbon is smaller, those fluorines are bigger and those oxygens are smaller. And if you look at the um, an electron density map, we can clearly see as well, we assigned too much electron density on the sulfur and not enough on that carbon. So what's happening here is this is sort of a head over heel um, disorder of this drift light and that's quite a common occurrence. So the way to deal with this in Olex2 is you double click on the entity and the command is mode fit minus s and then same. And if you put that in we can now literally grab that entity and turn it over. So we put in the sulfur, the carbon on the, on the sulfur and the sulfur on the carbon, move it apart a bit so they're not actually uh, totally on top of each other. That's time a shift and then grabbing the whole thing just a little bit apart. And um, I think this is close enough to give it a go. So hit escape either on the escape on the keyboard or down on the orange thing. And we hit control R, which is the same as refining and see what happens. And that looks really rather nice. So we are still isotropic and yet the R factor dropped to 2.3. 68%. We can also type refine. Let's do a few more cycles here to let it settle. Refine 10. And um, yep, that moves nicely. We've got very little movement left. It's 2.6% still. So we go anis, make it anisotropic. And the up key to refine again with 10 cycles or just refine or control R or pressing the button. And this is 1.93%. And let's have a quick look at the map and see what happens there. So there's nothing happening here anymore. So I think this is fully done. And this looks very, very clean. So this is uh, this is a uh, very nice. So the, the level is 0 0.31, minus 0 0.31. So there's no worries here. Okay, um, just to make the ADP sensible here. So this is clearly, they're, they're very much in the same space. So there will be correlations and it won't refine independently very nicely. And this is why we've got the great Rigu restraints. So double click on one of those parts and type Rigu and double click on the other part and type Rigu. And let's watch the R factor closely. Um, if the Rigu works and these start looking really nice and the R factor does not change or does not go up drastically, then we've done the right thing. Control R to refine. And so this has tightened them up. The R factor has not really changed. That's a good sign. So we are now finding a much better space to be in and uh, refine it again. And um, there we go. It's settling nicely. It's getting settling quite slowly. Let's see what's moving here while well, it's those ones. So if that wouldn't settle, and I, I suspect it probably will, then we probably need a slightly stronger Rigo here. But at the moment, I think if we do a few more cycles, it probably will settle to a reasonable uh, uh, value here to, to zero. There we go. More or less, one more time, come on, for good measure. And um, then let's examine what we've got before we declare it finished. Um, so first of all, again, the density, and that looks very, very good. Let's look at part zero and part one. So this one looks like a very healthy uh, triflate. Carbon's a little bit bigger, but that's kind of expected if it's moving about uh, and the same over here. So that looks very nice. The occupancies, if you hover the mouse, so it's 34% in part two and uh, obviously the rest in part one. So we can look at both of them and then we can see that. We might want to tidy up the um, 
the, the um, image a little bit so what we can do uh, if you go to the draw menu and we if we have got draw plus installed we can um, select part two and then make it a whole a, a sort of ghost uh, appearance and select all again so we see that we've got the major part showing and the other part is shown as a ghost that sort of gives you sort of a nice visual picture you could switch f4 to the um thing over here so that it gives us the fog is, is, is here in this way so we might want to rerun the fog with a dark background so i need to right click um right click on the background come on right click on the background and then draw style same properties and set this to something dark um and when so we've done that again if you've got draw plus installed we can run ctrl j which will adjust the styles and we might want the gradient background whatever so there's ways of displaying this and make it look uh, as nice as you as, as you want really clear to uh, clear clear yeah, clear to clear the background here so we can make a picture anyway this wasn't the point the point is now i'm heading over to info and let's have a look at the diagnostics here f ops f calc that's the most important plot and that looks absolutely perfect so there's nothing really going on at all that's suspicious and let's look at the um, I over signal versus resolution they're, they're all very nice uh, reflection we should have done this first really but we know we've got a good data set it goes all the way out to to here i'm surprised it doesn't that, that it wasn't collected further out so there's no reason to cut this at 50 to 53 degrees because i mean obviously there's really good data still coming in so better structure would have resulted if more had been collected but it's obviously fulfills the icr criteria so that's that's fine uh last look at the bad reflections and there's nothing here so there really wasn't any reason to omit any of those reflections that were omitted in the first place now i don't know where this comes from but let's just fix this manually so we go up here for some reason these 90 degrees have any ESD with them and they shouldn't so we just uh, make this a zero here and a zero here and that should deal with that and i would say this is a nicely finished structure i wouldn't go any further with that the biggest q peak let's last check where it is i switch to q peaks on with ctrl q click on that and that's now close to the metal um, so that's kind of to be expected that there is a peak there um i think that is about all i can say about the structure um thanks for using olix too